Hi, my name is Alex Chi. I'm a producer of Gook. And my name is James Yi, and I'm the producer of Gook. Well, the film is about two Korean American brothers that own a shoe store in Paramount, California, and their relationship with an 11 year old African American girl in the neighborhood, and the kind of the events that they go through on the first day of the 1992 LA riots. I grew up in San Francisco, um, and I grew up in Lakeview, which is a prim uh, predominantly an African American neighborhood. Um, so our family had a very unique uh, upbringing uh, in mixed cultures between Korean and African American. And then also our director, Justin, who was the primary writer of the film, uh, his father uh, actually owned a shoe store um, that was looted during the riots. Um, so it was a very personal story for him. Justin always, you know, wanted to do this story. Um, but I think what really drove him was um, he had a couple of interviews for a couple of other LA riots films that were that were like you know in pre-production and scripting phase two, and you know I think he just brought took him upon himself to be like you know what I want to tell my story with my voice. We felt like especially with the uh, 1992 riot films, there's never been a genuine inside view of the Korean American community. The Korean American community is kind of always ostracized as the single image of them holding a rifle on the rooftop to defend their stores. But there's so many more layers to that story and why we were in the community and who we were and how we were interacting in the community and what led up to those times. So for us, we felt like we had to do it ourselves to give it the genuine voice. We chose to shoot black and white and the primary influence of this film was Lehane. So for us, going black and white kind of gave homage to kind of the European French cinema that we wanted to reflect um, and also it kind of show that like, we're dealing with a black and white issue, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a racial issue, it's black and white. And then on top of that, it, it benefited us that being a low budget production, um, we can actually move quicker and faster because we don't have to quite match our color palettes and do a, extensive um, you know, props and things like that. We were able to kind of ease the corners and kind of get through the production a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. But our primary reason was kind of artistic to kind of show the, this cinema style that we wanted to reflect. Because of the accelerated timeline and we had to meet the Sundance deadline, we actually had two editors on set um, editing while we were shooting. Mm -hmm. um, and they were doing their roughs on set. And we did all of our editing and assembles in Premiere. So we were shooting uh, with RED, uh, 4K. Um, and we were, and because we needed to edit on set and we needed to do things quickly, we didn't actually have time to um, put these into offline. So we were actually going directly 4K on set, editing directly into uh, the suite. So that workflow really helped us out. And also because we're doing so many renders and so many things going on simultaneously, um, the media encoder was very helpful. So being able to queue up a file or a sequence, send it to render, and then go back into Premiere and be able to continue editing and working on something else, kind of let us double up what we needed to do. I mean, I guess because Premiere makes it so easy for independent filmmakers to you know, go out and shoot and then come back and finish their project. And, you know, Sundance is looking for projects like this. Ours is, you know, since we are in the next category, is because this is, a, you know, it's a new type of filmmaking and stuff. So it, it helped us finish our project and get the accelerated timeline we needed to, you know, get it done.